Hi, I'm Jenny Hutchinson, Curator of Education and Programs at the Hyde Collection. My role at the museum is stewarding programs for adults in the community. The coordination of these activities, if I have managed them properly, erases my fingertips from view. It is a purposeful action, as when I have successfully hidden all those detailed pieces from view, participants are able to fully immerse themselves in the experience of art. It is my greatest hope that each person, no matter their age, background, or experience, leaves the Hyde Collection empowered to explore new talents, skills, and concepts within their lives and their communities. In conjunction with our virtual event and online auction, Hyde at Home, this week, join me in this video to listen in with some of the testimonials provided by our collaborators, partners, and supporters to bring innovative and transformative programming to the Hyde and our community. My name is Vicki Palermo. I'm an artist working in the area. And last year I was lucky enough to act as the juror for the artists of the Mohawk Hudson Regional Exhibit. And I enjoyed working with the Hyde and with Jenny Hutchinson and her crew to expand the public educational component and I'd love to talk about that more. In a rural area like ours, museums and art organizations are a lifeline to artists. The Hyde is a reminder that art is a big deal. It is a big deal all over the world and has been for a long, long time. Not to mention the obvious that the Hyde brings us work by old masters to check in with on a regular basis. Artists who are working now bring fresh energy and a greater diversity to the museum community. They are a reminder that art is something that exists on a continuum and new work leads us to look not just at the world around us in a different way, but at the art of the past too. In 2019, the International Council of Museums offered an alternative definition for museums as spaces for critical dialogue about the pasts and the futures acknowledging, addressing conflicts and challenges of the present. I remember reading about that in the New York Times, just as we were developing programs, including the talk by Bill McKibben and a panel of artists discussing how worry about climate change had affected their work. I read that in the Times and thought, okay, this is going to be all right. We have permission now. The activities that revolved around the AMHR exhibit, the Bill McKibben talk about art and climate change, our separate panel event with artists discussing their connection to environment, the art site chats, the poetry readings, all contributed to developing a sense of community around the AMHR that involved both the artists and the audience at large. Miraculously, we made it all happen you and your team. Art is not produced in a vacuum. Anyone who studies art history realizes that art from every period is a reflection of the culture and time in which it is embedded. We know that great movements in art have happened as a result of artists getting together. This museum has a wonderful opportunity to provide the richness of background for art. By this, I'm not talking about the physical backdrop but about providing information about the unseen events and histories that produce the work, as well as the ways of looking at the art. That kind of layered experience over time is what leads folks to love art and not be worried about looking at art as some kind of test. My name is Erin Kuhn. I am a past president and past employee for Art in the Public Eye. Art in the Public Eye, we usually go by Ape. Ape has been really collaborating with the Hyde for the last two years. We first started working with them uh, to do theatrical tours of the Hyde Museum. And then we've also been doing a program called Black Fly. And it's a uh, speaking program where we have a theme and we invite speakers to tell a story based on that theme. It has to be a true story from their lives. Particularly with the tours that we've done, inspire artists 
by using work at the Hyde, uh, particularly our playwrights. They get inspired by the work that's at the Hyde, and then they're able to create a storyline to go with the artwork. And then we're able to track that all the way through to the public being able to come in and see the artwork. Uh, maybe some of them have been to the Hyde in the past. Maybe some of them have never been to the Hyde before um, and they know, you know, a person who's in the, the show or something. But both of them are being, are both of those groups of people in, and the artists as well are able to connect with art in a new way. The reason that the arts is such a wonderful place to be educated is because it's limitless. There are infinite numbers of ways to do art and to appreciate art and to participate in art. So collaboration is the best way to be able to find the ways that work to be able to reach more people and serve more people and educate more people. It's nice to be able to not have to live by what's written in your guide and be able to like, because I feel like so often I go into a museum and I'm overwhelmed by so many things, right? And so I just want to get to as much of it as I can and I'm not really turning on the critical thinking piece. I'm just reading what they're saying. I'm like, well, they already did the work, right? So this sort of gives people an opportunity to pull out just a few pieces from the collection and really interpret them in a new way. And that's awesome. Those people who play acted those pieces, who play acted those characters, um, were really phenomenal. And they were able to make a lasting impression on people. So I know that I now will always remember who Mary Thayer is and who her father was and which piece she's in. And that is something that I probably wouldn't necessarily have burned into my memory if I had just gone and self-toured. These programs are, obviously they help us to fulfill mission, but they're not about us. They're about the community. Um, and that's who they help. And if, if we consider Black Fly, for example, um, you are giving people a platform to speak uninterrupted for 10 to 15 minutes about something personal to them. I bet that that's something that helps people, helps people to step into their power. Um, it's a way of expressing yourself and it's so akin to a way that somebody might express themselves through song or through visual art or through acting. So it's it's eye-opening and it, it helps to bring people closer together as a community to be able to know a little bit more about your neighbor. My name is Jennifer Brink. I'm the executive director of the Glens Falls Symphony. And we at the Symphony have had a number of collaborations with the Hyde Collection, We've had events there, we collaborated with some special holiday events that were really lovely, and we look forward to lots of creative partnerships in the future. So we at the Symphony find it's really important and engaging to uh, collaborate with the Hyde Collection for a lot of reasons, partly because we have some audience members in common, but we have many who are not in common. So it, uh, it makes the audience a little bit more expanded on for both of us. And uh, on an artistic level, of course, having the sound and sight and all those kinds of experiences um, woven together whenever we can is really special. It's special for us, it's special for the musicians. Um, and we know that people who attend, whether they're children or adults or whatever, that there's uh, the whole lot of extra enrichment that comes from having the visual and the oral working together or in complementing each other or whatever. So there's a lot that we uh, find just fabulous about it. How wide of a net do we cast when we're looking for, in our case music, in the Hyde's case art, and when we're collaborating together, how much can we open our minds to embrace traditions that haven't traditionally necessarily been in the museum, in the concert hall, etc. So that's a big part of change. It's a big part of healthy change, etc. There's so many things from around the world and in different corners of the world, different corners of culture. Um, and they're just 
the the human drive to create things that are visually meaningful, things that are orally meaningful, and then of course in many cases those connections to movement or dance or religion or ritual or whatever. There's just a lot that um, some of the performing arts um, cultural ha habits have been kind of limiting in the past um, and have there definitely been uh, eras and times and situations and places where uh, not every artist was uh, considered a, a possible person. They just didn't meet the cultural or social criteria. And the same is true with composition and with styles of music. So definitely embracing change and, and casting a wider net on what is allowed to take place in the concert hall. So that is definitely a part of, in our world, keeping the symphony a uh, concert space alive is opening up the doors so that not only are there more kinds of voices coming in and being a part of this great um, uh, performance tradition, but also so the audience has more interesting, varied, richer experiences and art in itself, the visual beauty, visual storytelling, visual abstraction, all of these things, these are just human things. These are not elitist things, these are human things. So yeah, there's just all kinds of opportunity for creativity. The drive of artists to share their stories, their images, their sounds, their whatever, with, with other humans, it just, you know, it just can't be stopped. Like under any circumstance, it just, it's, it's a force of nature. It's just these things just want to get out there and people want to hear them and soak them in. So it's just a matter of those of us who are uh, engaged in stewarding the organizations to listen, be creative, be adaptive, try new things, uh, you know, hear how people are responding and uh, go with things that people really engage with. My name is Susan Beadle and I've been involved with the Hyde for many years. Um, most recently, however, I've been working uh, with the Hyde to promote yoga and Summit Yoga is partnering with the Hyde on a Saturday morning class and it's a wonderful opportunity for people to practice yoga in the midst of art and bring these two things together in a very unique setting. The other way that I'm involved uh, with the Hyde is through the Plein Air Adirondack Association. And the Hyde has very graciously um, offered us an opportunity to participate in a Plein Air event at the Hyde for the last two years. Yoga is very mental. And I think when people think about it, they think, oh, it's exercise or it's stretching, but it's a, it's a mental exercise. And to have that mental exercise in the surrounding of art and it doesn't really matter what the exhibit is because you're looking at somebody else's mental state uh, yoga has a tendency to do is it links time periods so you know in if you are practicing yoga and you are um, preparing to move or you're thinking about a movement and you're looking around and you're, you're seeing art that was prepared 100 years ago, 200 years ago, or six weeks ago. You know, it's connecting you to that uh, continuum of time. And a practice of yoga is a continuum of time. It's, a, it's, it's an ancient practice. And so we're marrying modern movement with ancient intellect. By offering a plein air festival, as we have for the past two years, it gives people an unexpected collaboration with a world-class organization. It, it kind of opens their eyes to the real humanity of the Hyde and how they can become involved and they can become part of this uh, organization. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what level your artistic practice practices at. If you're a beginner, a sketcher, a very accomplished painter, it doesn't matter. It just offers an opportunity to be part of the grand scheme of things, the grand scheme of art. When you go to the Hyde, when you participate in a Hyde event, it's almost like it's bigger than yourself, if you know what I mean. It, it just brings in a whole nother dimension. And I think 
it's that multi-dimensional aspect that I love because that's how we learn. We don't learn by looking at a book or reading a word or memorizing a fact. I, I, I believe true learning is experiential and that's what the Hyde has to offer. I think people don't know what they don't know. And when you have an institution like the Hyde that offers opportunity uh, for classes, for lectures, for concerts, for you know, drama, you name it, you know, you guys offer it. When you offer those things to people, you never know who's going to be inspired by a random act of going to the hide. You, you just don't know. And I think that's the wonderful thing about it is the possibilities. You are building a foundation for programs that are going to change people's lives.